Hi, my name is Patricia Dakota Combs, and this is my life legacy. I was born February 8th, 1953, in San Diego. I grew up in National City, which is a suburb, and even a little smaller suburb of National City in Lincoln Anchors. Uh, the house I grew up in for the first 18 years of my life 2222 Granger Avenue. That was always easy to remember. It was right across the street from the junior high that I went to and kind of around the corner from the Lincoln Acres Elementary School that I went to. Um, the house was a three bedroom, one bath that my grandpa Rounds, my mother's father, owned. And uh, I grew up, I'm number seven, by the way, of 12 kids. Uh, we didn't all live in that house at one time. That would have really been hard. Um, but enough of us were there at one time that it, it kind of got crowded. It, it, I think when I grew, was growing up, that just felt kind of normal. Um, I do remember when we only had three bedrooms and one bath, I do remember uh, my dad. He liked to uh, kind of grab his pack of cigarettes and newspaper and in the mornings, he liked to grab that bathroom. And when he did, he was in there for a long time. And when I say long time, I'm talking maybe one to two hours. And if that was the case and you had to go to the bathroom, the boys, the older boys, we had a back porch that was high enough. They just go out and kind of pee off the back porch. Us little girls, we had a chamber pot in the uh, laundry room. The older girls, they kind of go next to the next door neighbors and knock on the door. And uh, that was just life when you're in a, a big family with one bathroom. And another ritual I remember when I was a little when I was little, I had long red hair, uh, kind of down to my waist. And uh, when we, we had eight girls, well, the older girls, we had three older girls, but we had enough younger, uh, enough of us younger girls that mom had to uh, wash her hair. And the ritual was she would clear off the um, kitchen counter and put us, lay us down on the kitchen counter and put a towel behind our neck and just wash our hair in the kitchen sink. We had one of those big, uh, like a farm sink. And uh, just, it was kind of relaxing, especially it took a while to, to wash that many heads. And uh, especially with the long hair, wash and rinse. And speaking of washing, I remember we had an old style washing machine. It was this type that it had an old cranking um, ringer. You did a load of laundry and then you had to hand feed each piece of um, clothing into the hand wringer very carefully so you didn't get your fingers caught. And crank it in, grab it and crank it in to the where it get, it fed it in to the tub behind it full of, of uh, rinse water and crank it in. And like I said, you made sure your fingers didn't get caught and it would, the rinse water was behind you in a big tub of water and then you'd swing it like this and then you'd do it all over again and crank it from the rinse water into a dry tub and we there would be a mountain of laundry and I'd watch my mom and my older sisters as it was their turn to do it and all that laundry had to be hand taken taken out to the backyard and pinned up onto the to the lines to dry we had no dryers in those days everything dried on the line and uh, that was, so laundry took a long time to do when you had that many kids. And uh, it was always that way. 
And I remember another thing. When we were growing up, we had our, our house always stood out because we had two huge palm trees. I mean, they were huge. Just standing like sentinels in our front yard, dirt front yard. But they had grown so big that their palm fronds hung to the ground, almost touching. And they were so strong and sturdy that us little kids could hang on them and just swing around. And that was like our, our plaything, our toys almost. <laughs> just, we would just swing around. Occasionally one might come off, but not very often. And uh, I just remember that was so much fun to do, just hang on them and swing around. They're not there anymore. Every time we go back, kind of take a drive by 2222 Granger Avenue, so much has changed. And, our palm trees aren't there anymore, but they were fun growing up. And I remember the front yard and the backyard were always dirt. Could never go grass. There was just too many feet stomping around. And uh, when I was growing up, young, little, there were never fences there either. And I remember occasionally we would wander, um, hearing my mom tell stories that she'd call up a neighbor, is so-and-so over at your house. And all the neighbors knew our family, so my mom felt comfortable knowing that some of the neighbors or the kids would be found. In those days, she didn't worry, or she didn't have to worry. Neighbors looked after the kids, um, and they'd bring them back home safe and sound. And uh, one of the things in our Lincoln Acres in our neighborhood. There was a local church. I don't know what denomination. We didn't go to it, but they had a big sign out front. And on the sign, it wasn't come to our church. It wasn't service. It was just one scripture. It was John three sixteen, And it was written out, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever should believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I didn't know what it meant, but in those days, you had to walk everywhere. I didn't have a bicycle, I didn't have a car, so I had to walk by that church to the grocery store, to a friend's house, to the movie theater. I had to walk everywhere. And so, even as a young child, I learned to read early. So, as I would walk by that church, I'd look up, I'd read it. As I walked back home, I'd look up, I'd read it. Years go by. I'd always, it just would be an automatic thing. Look up, read it, go by it. I think God used that sign as planting the first seed in my heart because I grew up Catholic. And so I went to catechism. I went at to First Communion, I learned about God and the Trinity, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, but I don't remember anything else going to, to catechism. But I do remember memorizing that first scripture, John 3.16, and later giving my heart to Jesus.